Hello, welcome to biology session. In the previous session, we were looking at uh, cell specialization under animal sp cell specialization. We started looking at uh, the red blood cell erythrocytes. We'll start from there because there was uh, uh, a disturbance. So we continue uh, under cell specialization, uh, animal cell specialization in particular. We have a red blood cell, which is called erythrocyte. I said the function is to transport oxygen and small amount of carbon dioxide. Uh, adaptation, what makes, what features makes, ma ma makes it to carry out uh, this uh, transportation of these gases. One, by concave disc shape to increase the surface area for uh, diffusion of oxygen. Then uh, presence of red pigment called hemoglobin, which has a high affinity for oxygen. Hemoglobin combines with uh, oxygen to form oxyhemoglobin when it high in concentration in the lungs. When oxygen concentration is uh, uh, low in the muscles, remember oxygen is exhausted in the muscles because energy, it is used to generate energy through the process of respiration. So when the concentration are low in the muscles, uh, oxymoglobin disassociates, separates from hemoglobin and oxygen. Then the next uh, specialized cell that uh, we have, we have the nerve cell. The other name for nerve cell is the neuron. Functions to conduct electrical impulses. Other term for electrical impulses, uh, nerve impulses from one part of the body uh, to the other. What makes the nerve cell or the neuron to conduct these electrical impulses from one part of the body to the other? Number one, presence of dendrites. These dendrites that collect impulses from neighboring cells. Uh, secondly, presence of axon that carries impulses from one end of the neuron to the other. The next one, presence of a synaptic knob that forms a link with other neuron. This is the junction. Then presence of nodes of Ranvia that uh, makes impulses move faster. So the nodes of Ranvia makes the movement of impulses faster. So I'll be able to show you all these diagrams so that you appreciate what uh, I'm talking about. So not, not the part of neuron having nucleus and the cytoplasm is called the cell body. So the cell body is a part of the neuron having the nucleus and cytoplasm. So where you see the nucleus, there is a cytoplasm around, okay? That is called cell body. That's the term given to uh, that part of uh, the neuron. Then we have uh, white blood cells. These are called, these cells that defend the body against infections, diseases. So if you are attacked by a disease, it may be a signal, maybe there is low immunity due to little white blood cells that are supposed to fight such particular infection or uh, these white blood cells, they have been overwhelmed due to rapid multiplication of whatever, maybe bacteria or the virus. So two examples of white blood cells uh, are phagocytes and lymphocytes. So we need to know the subtypes of white blood cells, the phagocytes and lymphocytes, their functions and the adaptation. So these defend the body against infection by engulfing, okay, and digesting germs, foreign bodies. So key weight, engulfing and digesting. So when you are told to state the function of these phagocytes, you say they defend the body against the uh, infection by engulfing and digesting germs. To engulf, more like uh, the, the, the germs, they are surrounded and put in the center and then be digested or destroyed. Adaptation, what makes this uh, possible? Lobed nucleus. So it has a lobed nucleus which makes engulfing of germs easy. The nucleus of these phagocytes see, has three lobes or more. So where you see lobes in the cell, you should know that that is a phagocyte. Then amoebic movement, it moves like amoeba, which makes it for them to move towards the germs. So they move towards, they gravitate towards the, the germs. 
Then they have no fixed shape but change their shape, making engulfing foreign bodies possible. So they don't have a fixed uh, uh, shape, which makes them to uh, manipulate themselves and be able to engulf these. Then uh, lymphocytes, we have functions to defend the body against infections by producing antibodies and antitoxins. So these lymphocytes, they produce chemicals which are called antibodies and antitoxins. Antibodies are proteins that destroy germs and foreign bodies, while antitoxins are proteins that neutralize poison from germs. So the antitoxins, they just neutralize the poisons from germs, while antibodies uh, protect, they destroy the germs and uh, foreign uh, bodies. So what are the adaptations, presence of large nucleus? and a thin cytoplasm. They have a large nucleus and a thin cytoplasm. Then uh, we go to the guard cells. These are pairs of cells that surround, the each, uh, that surround each stomata. The functions to control the size of uh, uh, stoma, that's the function. Then adaptations. They occur in pairs and each cell has a semicircular curved shape when it tagged and straight when it plasmolized when they lose water. The, their cell walls are thinner around the stoma, an opening than anywhere else. This makes it possible for the stoma to open the, the, these cells uh, to absorb uh, water. So in the next uh, session we'll be looking at uh, the phloem, the parisade cells and then we'll look at uh, cell organization in multicellular organisms.